Now I'm ready to add some fur. So I'm just going to change this into the grooming shells. And you'll see it's suddenly jumped into headlight only. Um, this is how you get back to the um, HDRI environment if you want. Um, I'm just going to stick to this for now. And I'm going to select the Bind Geo and click Add Fur. Now it's asking me to select an animated skin geometry, but right now I don't want to do that. So I just pressing enter. If you, for example, if you do select another geometry, so again, I'm pressing geometry add fur and it's asking me to select another geometry, press enter. It's going to drop down a guide deform node, which will transfer the fur from the bind to the animated mesh. Oh, in this case, it just failed. Okay. Well, if you do do that and you see three nodes, just delete the guide deform node. Okay. So I'm going to name this lion body room or no guides. And lion body there. Now, if I click this, I can view the guides. And now I I want to change this so that it's I'm not grooming, you know, on the face, and there's guides coming in the eyes, that sort of thing. Oh, also. Sorry, let me go back to this bind geo because it's showing the VDB, but I actually just want to see the the normal geometry. Okay, that's better. Right. So I it's automatically selecting this body here, but I want to choose what the fur is growing on. So I'm I'm gonna I'm pressing down Y to bring up these choppy scissors and I'm just chopping the path between the two and you'll see it's now brought up uh, I made this enabled to select a path see because right now you'll see because I was viewing the VDB it's growing the fur off the VDB which we don't want so I'm gonna click here and you can filter because normally it's like this there's all sorts of stuff but because I've been naming all these nulls without I can filter out and I can select the lion fur geometry, which is what I want to grow the fur on. And I could also, since I made that group, it should show up here. So I click the body group and now I'm only growing the guides on the body and not the head. Uh, we can change the density here. Um, you can change, let me just turn on the wireframe. You can change the relax iteration. So the higher this is, the more grid-like it's going to be. And the lower it is, the more random and patchy it will be. I'm going to set this to five. Okay, you can also change the segments here and the length. Um, I'm okay with the defaults for now. And one thing I do want to check off is display as subdivision curves. This can make your scene really slow. And since the body for guides aren't really curly, I don't need to see high smoothing on these curves. So I'm going to turn display as subdivision curves off. Another thing I want to change is I also want to set the path for the VDB source because right now it's just set to default. So I'm going to change to SOP geometry and same thing here, but selecting the out VDB except. So to groom the actual guides for the body, we're going to draw, go inside this node by double clicking. 
And the way I don't want to brush all these furs, I could, but there's a really awesome way to do this in Houdini using the curve advect. So if I just click this here, it should drop down a guide advect. Great. Okay. And what this does is I can now draw curves that snap along the body and the fur will then follow that direction. So I'm viewing the guide advect node and if I click the draw curve, um, you'll see this brush comes up. Um, you can scroll to change the radius, you can change it here. And if I just draw along the body, you'll see it's now grooming along the curve. And you could see that it is also mirroring it. You can change the mirror direction here. And it's using this volume velocity from curves to affect all the other curves. So we just have to go ahead and draw more curves. And obviously, as you saw, this is quite slow. So if you don't want to see what's happening, you can just view the draw curve and it'll be a lot faster. And now if I go back and view it. And if you ever want to delete some of the curves, you can delete the strokes here. Um, it's kind of hard to see the curves, but they are in there. If you go to wireframe, you can see. And the projection here, it's already set up to project against the geometry. So just keep going, adding curves. Until we're happy with it. Oh, let's fix this. So I finished with the guide advect and just so you know, if you do ever want to view these inputs here, if you drop down a null node and plug the guides in here, we can see what the original guides looked like to cross reference or even what the VDB looks like. Okay. Now I want to add variation within the guides in terms of length. So I'm going to add a guide set length, guide process, length node here. And instead of setting the entire length itself, we want to multiply. And we can even randomize. So the minimum, let's see. Uh, the lion fur is quite close to the body. So let's just set it as that for now. You could continue to add operations, but I like to keep the nodes separated themselves so I don't get confused on what is happening. Okay. And don't forget that uh, this is procedural, so it looks quite sparse on the feet. So I could go back to the guides here and I could bring up the density. It's going to be slow because it's recalculating the guide advect and the projection of the curves. But you see it's now added a lot more guides. Now, one thing I like to do at the end of each guide groom is to add a guide collide with VDB 
and what this does is we'll use the VDB as a collision. So if you've, say, used the brush tool to groom these guides and you've chromed, combed through the fur, like it's poking inside, you can use this to offset it off the skin. And this is just a preventative thing to make sure that none of the guides are going inside the mesh. Another thing I like to do is to add guide skin attribute lookup and the rest. This is just preventative sometimes, you know, when you're transferring fur or guides and you get weird errors, these two nodes can sometimes help. So what it's doing is the first input is the guides, the second input is looking for the skin, in this case, this node here, and a rest, we're just giving it a rest position. And now I... When you look at the ref, the line guides is so short on the body, but it is a bit longer on the paws. I could go in and try to use a brush and scale it, but it could be tricky when I want it to be a very smooth fall off. So what I want to do is to paint a mask. So let's do that next. <laughs> 